The German Autumn German, Deutscher Herbst, was a set of events in late 1977, associated with the kidnapping and murder of industrialist Hans Martin Schlier, president of the Confederation of German Employers Associations and the Federation of German Industries by the Red Army Faction insurgent group, and the hijacking of the Lufthansa airplane Landshut by the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine they demanded the release of ten RAF members detained at the Stamheim prison plus two Palestinian compatriots held in Turkey and $15 million in exchange for the hostages. The assassination of Siegfried Bubik, the Attorney General of West Germany on 7 April 1977, and the failed kidnapping and murder of the banker Jürgen Ponto on 30 July 1977, marked the beginning of the German autumn. It ended on 18 October, with the liberation of the Landshut, the death of the leading figures of the first generation of the RAF in their prison cells, and the death of Schlier. The phrase, German Autumn, is derived from the 1978 film Deutschland im Herbst, Germany in Autumn, a German omnibus film whose segments covered the social atmosphere during late 1977, while offering different critical perspectives and arguments pertaining to the situation. The directors involved were Heinrich Boll, Hans Peter Kluge, Rainer Werner Fassbinder, Alexander Kluge, Maximilian Manka, Edgar Reitz, Katja Rupe, Volker Schlondorf, Peter Schubert, and Bernhard Sinkel. Kluge and Beate Manka Jellinghaus edited the film. Topic: <laughs> Siegfried Bubik assassination. On 7 April 1977, Siegfried Bubik, the Attorney General of West Germany, was shot and killed alongside his driver Wolfgang Goebel and a passenger, judicial officer Georg Wurster, in an ambush whilst travelling from his home in Nariet to the Bundesgerichtshof in Karlsruhe. Four RAF members, Christian Klar, Knut Folkerts, Gunter Sonnenberg and Bridget Monhaupt were formally charged and prosecuted in connection with the Bubik murder. In 2007, former RAF members Peter Jürgen Buch and Verena Becker claimed that another former RAF member, Stefan Wisniewski, had fired the gun that killed Bubik. <laughs> Jürgen Ponto kidnapping, murder On 30 July 1977, Jürgen Ponto, the head of Dresdner Bank, was shot and killed in his house in Oberursel in a kidnapping that went wrong. Those involved were Bridget Monhaupt, Christian Klar and Suzanne Albrecht, the last being the sister of Ponto's goddaughter. <laughs> Hans Martin Schlier kidnapping On 5 September 1977, an RAF commando unit attacked the chauffeured car carrying Hans Martin Schlier, then president of the German Employers Association, in Cologne. His driver, Heinz Marses, 41, was forced to brake when a baby carriage suddenly appeared in the street in front of them. The police escort vehicle behind them was unable to stop in time, and crashed into Schleier's car. Four or possibly five masked RAF members sprayed machine gun and machine pistol bullets into the two vehicles, killing Marses and a police officer, Roland Peeler, 20, who was seated in the backseat of Marses's car. The driver of the police escort vehicle, Reinhold Brandl, 41 and a third police officer, Helmut Ulmer, 24, who was in the second vehicle were also killed. The hail of bullets riddled over 20 bullet wounds into the bodies of Brandl and Peeler. Schlier was abducted and held prisoner in a rented apartment in an anonymous residential neighborhood near Cologne. He was forced to appeal to the center-left West German government under Helmut Schmidt for the first generation of RAF members then imprisoned to be exchanged for him. Police investigations to locate Schlier proved unsuccessful. On 18 October 1977, three of the imprisoned RAF members were found dead in their cells. In response, Schlier was taken from Brussels and shot dead en route to Malouze, France, where his body was left in the trunk of a green Audi 100 on the Rue Charles Pagai. After the kidnappers phoned the location of the Audi to the Deutsche Presseagentur office in Stuttgart, Schleier's body was recovered on 19 October. Landshut hijacking 
When it became clear that the government was unwilling to entertain a further prisoner exchange given the experience of the kidnapping of Peter Lorenz two years earlier, the RAF tried to exert additional pressure by hijacking the Lufthansa aeroplane Lanchet on October 13, 1977 with the help of the allied Palestinian group PFLP. After a long odyssey through the Arabian Peninsula and the execution-type killing of Captain Jürgen Schumann, the hijackers and their hostages landed in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia. After political negotiations with the Somali leader Siad Bar, the West German government was granted permission to assault the plane Lufthansa 181. This was carried out on 18 October by the Special Task Force GSG-9, which had been formed after the 1972 Munich Olympics hostage crisis. Only one GSG-9 member and one flight attendant were injured, of the hijackers only Suhaila Andras survived. On the same night, three of the imprisoned RAF members, Gudrun Enselin, Jan Karl Raspe and Andreas Bader, were found dead in their cells. The official investigation into the deaths of the imprisoned RAF members concluded that they had committed suicide, Bader and Raspe using handguns allegedly smuggled into the Stamheim Maximum Security Prison by their lawyer Arndt Muller, Enselin by hanging herself. Ermgard Mahler, who was imprisoned with them, survived with four knife wounds in her chest. She later claimed that the suicides were actually extrajudicial killings. On 12 November Ingrid Schubert was found hanged in her cell. Policy response Germany's political parties also came into fierce clashes during the German autumn. The CDU, CSU suspected that the ruling social liberal SPD-FDP coalition under Helmut Schmidt SPD were ideologically close to the insurgents. The coalition, in turn, accused the opposition of hysteric overreactions and seizing the opportunity to transform the Federal Republic a little way into a police state. This caused great indignation in the CDU, CSU. Despite, or because of, these conflicts, the opposition agreed to appoint Schmidt as chancellor during the formation of the Grower Kreisenstab, a temporary government formed at the beginning of the Schlier kidnapping, which involved members of all parties in the Bundestag. Historian Wolfgang Krauschar likened its 45-day rule to an undeclared state of emergency. One result of the cross-party collaboration was the contact spare, a law which mandated that RAF prisoners could have no access to newspapers, TV, or radio, and could not be visited by family or lawyers. Bibliography Montage, Music and Memory Remembering Deutschland im Herbst Usselmann, Rainer. 18. October 1977, Gerhard Richter's work of Mourning and its New Audience, College Art Association, Art Journal, Spring 2002 References External links 1977, The German Autumn Chronology of the Main Events, Statements by the RAF